Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to discuss how to implement health check using the out-of-box health check middleware provided by ASP.NET Core. This middleware is something available with ASP.NET Core 3.1. So to do that, I'm going to first create a project in ASP.NET Core 3.1. So I'm going to select ASP.NET Core web application. And for the application, I'm going to name it as healthcheck.demo. And I'm going to select an API project and everything I'll keep as is. Once the project is created for the health check purpose, what we have to do is we have to go into the configure services method. And here to the iService collection instance, which is services, we can call the extension method add health checks. And then after that, we can say add check, which will add a new check. And this is the health check method that we are going to add. And to the add check method, first we can provide a name. So I'm going to name it as test health check for the time being. And then it takes a func, which is supposed to return a response of type health check result. So here what we can do is we can do and for this one we have to add the namespace microsoft.extensions.diagnostics.healthcheck. So I'll add the namespace and once I add that, let me just reduce this side. Yeah. So once I add that, I can add any of these methods, which is degraded, healthy, or unhealthy. So for the time being, for a very simple example, let's just call the healthy. And we can pass a description for it is. So we can say server is healthy. So now we added the add health check method into the service collection or the dependency injection container. Next thing that we have to do is now that it is added, we have to go here in the endpoints. And here we are going to say in the use endpoints method, we're going to say endpoints dot map health checks. And for the health check, we have to give a pattern. So we are going to say API slash health. So that's the pattern, meaning if we try to access API slash health, it is going to trigger the health check middleware, which we added here in the add check method. So now let's test it. So I'm going to run this application and then we're going to see the results. And after running the application, if I go to API slash health and I can see that the server is healthy so it is working as expected so this is a very basic implementation now let's just make things a little bit interesting so let's say we want to in most of the scenario the health check is not going to be as simple as that then it's like completely useless health check so we are going to do the health check in a separate class so let's say our system stocks to database so one of the cases that we want to check for health check is that if we are able to connect to the database or not. So for that, we can create a new class here and we can call it as DB health check provider. And here for this class, we can just have public and we are going to return the same health check result as an output. So we're going to say health check result. And then we're going to say method name is check. I'm going to add the namespace. And let's say for this method, since it will be called from the startup class itself, I'm just going to accept the connection string here in the parameter because we'll create an instance of this class and call it directly. And here 
we'll have code to check if db is running and if it is running we're going to return health check result dot healthy and then if it is not running we can return health check result dot unhealthy so for the time being just let's return health check result dot healthy i'm not going to use the connection string or anything i'm just showing how it could be used to check a real database to connect to a database i'm just showing that you know we need the connection string to connect to a database and test things out so for the time being i'm just going to keep it as is so now if we go here instead of doing this we can we might as well can say and since this method is completely stateless and it has only a single purpose we can just define this as a static and we can define this class also static we are not going to maintain any state here so then here we can say db health check provider dot check for the time being we'll just pass the empty string because it's not important for this case and we can name this as db health check and now if i run the application again i should be seeing similar response as healthy so if i go api slash health now let's go back into the db health check method and let's change it to unhealthy instead so if we change it to unhealthy and run this application what's going to happen is it's going to say that the server is unhealthy so it is unhealthy so now this can be used in applications and you can see that it is giving a fail so now this can be used in different monitoring application this api can be configured and here of course unhealthy will be returned only if the db is not running now let's say there is a scenario where we have a db as well as we have a connectivity to something like a rabbit mq now in that case we can put all the checks here but it gets a little bit you know untidy and it just keeps all the responsibility to one class even for health check why should we do that so let's say we create a different class and we name it as mq mq health check provider and here also let's make this class aesthetic and just like this function we're just going to copy paste the same function here and let's say we're going to return healthy here first let me add the namespace and let's make it as healthy and check if mq is running or whether we are able to connect to mq or not now what we can do is this add health check if you look at this it returns a health check builder which means we can do a dot here and we can add another check and for this check we can name it as mq health check and then we can do the same thing here and instead of db health check provider we can say mq health check provider dot check and of course for mq health check provider also we'll provide the uh, empty connection string here and this will be more like a instead of connection string it's more like a mq uri so now if we run this application and we go back to api slash health we see it as unhealthy because one of the provider is unhealthy now if we go back to the code and now we go to the db health check provider and make this one also healthy then since both the health check provider is healthy at this point in time mq as well as db now if we run this application and go back to health the application will show as healthy and then after running the application if we go back to api slash health we see that the application is now healthy 
which is expected. The beauty of this add check is you can add as many check and you can chain all the checks together and you can completely isolate individual checks into individual classes so that way you don't have to clap everything together and the health check response will always return the aggregation of the responses. Now another way of implementing the health check if I go back let me first stop this application and if I go back here and I do add check you can see that add check takes a type which means we can declare a type here so let me add another health check provider and this time let me add a health check provider for external HTTP call so let's say we are making a call to an external HTTP call so let's say HTTP let me make it very specific let's say we are using send grid for sending email so I can name it as send grid send grid health check provider and here what I can do is I can implement the interface I health check and to make it available I have to add the name space microsoft.extensions.diagnostics.healthcheck and then I implement the interface method which is check healthy async and it takes these two parameters and now here what I can do is just return task dot from result and I can say health check result dot healthy and once I do that once I create this class now I can go back here and I can just add these and I can provide a name and I can say send grid health check and for a minute let me just comment out the other two health checks just so that we can ensure this is the only one which is getting called and now if I run this and I go back to API slash health I can see it's showing healthy now let me again uncheck both of these run this and show that it is still working and it's going to show healthy as expected you can see it's showing as healthy so once I shown this now next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to postman and run the same health check URL from postman so I'm going to go into postman paste the API slash health and then send a request and once I send the request I can see that I'm getting a 200 back and a healthy now let's go back to the project and change one of the requests to unhealthy and see how postman behaves so I'm going to go that's a DB health check provider and I'm going to make it as unhealthy and then run and once it is started I'll go back to postman and execute the same query and now I can see that it is saying 503 service unavailable and the status is unhealthy so you can see that based on HTTP status code the monitoring application can decide what is the state of the service the other thing we can do is one thing which I have not covered yet is there is a apart from being healthy and unhealthy there is another one which is degraded which means the response is now not as good as it should be and this is something we can decide based on let's say if we put a timer here and we check how much time it takes to access the database or any other thing and based on that we can say you know the health is degraded so after I do that let me run the application and go back to postman and execute the same query and now we can see that the status code is still 200 because technically it is still working there's nothing broken it's just that the response is degraded so this is very important distinction between an unhealthy and degraded so you can see 
how easy, convenient, and extremely fluent it is to add health check into our application in ASP.NET Core 3.1. So this is all I have to cover today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to my channel and you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to it. And thanks so much for watching this video.